Hey folks, I'm going to show you how to start your coiled baskets and things that you will need for that. Masking tape, one of the large eyed plastic needles, so there's a large eye right there, and you need about eight feet of coiling core. So this is the coiling core, okay, about eight feet of that. And then you also need um, some yarn. And because we're doing the coasters, we're using up some of the scrap yarn. Um, I'm using two different colors so you can kind of see the pattern that it starts to make and also see more easily how we change colors when you run out or change pieces of yarn. When you're first getting your piece of yarn, ideally, if you stretch out your arms as wide as they go and fingertip to fingertip hold onto that yarn and it should be about that full full length again so arms wide holding that yarn so that's about five to six feet of yarn hopefully when you get started so I'm going to start with the dark brown just so it's a little bit easier to see and I don't need my second color yet but I need my coiling core now mine is just little so I can just show you and and that works really well okay So first, if you notice, the end of this is just a blunt cut, it's just straight across. I need to taper it back about an inch and a half to two inches. So I'm going to start right kind of at the corner and a very slow taper back. I have to keep inching up on the scissors because it's pretty thick stuff. So, and that just will peel away. So we've got to kind of seal it up so it doesn't just shred. And to do that, you see it, it came back about two knuckles worth, so from the tip of my finger back two for that taper. And then I need some masking tape, and I've already got a piece here, and I'm going to start with that at an angle. I don't want to cut it or put it just straight on there. I want to angle it just a little bit, and I'm going back behind where my cut is, and I want to wrap that nice and tight around my coiling core. If I need to, I can kind of angle that a little bit more again nice and tight and we're just tapering that whole thing so I'm, again really nice and tight hopefully I didn't go off camera there so it's almost like a needle kind of and then you just tear off that excess so again it should taper down like that it should not be an abrupt ending so nice and tapered Then, um, again, you want to kind of think in terms of knuckles, so about an inch long, so it's about an inch, about an inch, and then about an inch, so about three inches there. I'm going to start my coiling back about an inch, so about, a, again, a knuckle's worth, right, about to there. Okay, so I'm going to start with my brown, because it's easier to see, and I'm starting back, I actually start that about two inches back, but I start coiling about an inch, so it's going, it's not going the same, so it's not end to end. It goes backward about to where I cut it, um, cut the coiling cord. Then, okay, so you can see it pointing back toward me. Then I'm going to start wrapping that around nice and close and tight together. If it's gappy, you're going to see part of the coiling core, and it's going to look bad and you coil about an inch, maybe an inch and a half. You can really nice and tight. And this is gonna be the little loop. So what I'm starting to make is that. Okay, so I'm making this little spiral right in there. Okay, so then when I get, again, about an inch, inch and a half, I pull that back. That's not quite far enough. It's too far away there. So I'm gonna keep going a little bit. Can nice and tight together, no gaps. Okay, so now I can fold it over and get it get it tight. You may see a tiny amount of light through there, but it shouldn't be more than just a tiny amount. Now I'm going to co coil over both of those. So you can see I folded that over, and I've got just a little skinny layer up against the main coiling core. And then again, nice and tight. You can shift that up there if you need to. Then you're going to keep doing that until you can bring that around and start. So see, I'm kind of forcing it there and I'm getting little spots. 
So I need to go just a little bit further. Okay, so I still can't quite get it there. And I've got to push pretty hard. Okay, so I'm about to there. Now you can see I've got a little bit showing there. So I want to kind of cover that up when I make my first stitch. But it's all nice and tight together. I'm not seeing big spaces in there. And it's all really nice and tight. Now at this point, I need to actually start doing stitches. I'm going to cut the end of it. Oh, no. Had a big fuzzy spot there. So I'm going to put that thread through there, the yarn through the needle. You can double that up a little bit. Now, you can either be coming from the top or from the bottom, but you're going to be consistent. So I'm coming up from the bottom and I'm capturing the, the one closest to it, the coil part closest to it. Now see how I doubled over my yarn and now it's getting tangled there. I can't have that much of a tail. So I'm going to pull that excess back out. It should be only one. Oops, I did the wrong one. It should be only one. So when you pull that yarn through the needle, you're not going to have that much of a tab there. Okay, and I'm going, now I came up through the center. I'm going to go over two. And you could do double. Or you can do just single. I'm going to do just single, so I'm going to take that back through there. Okay, so I got to pull that tight and then bring that around. You got to get in there nice and tight. And one, two, three, four, five. You can go five or you can go six. It doesn't matter which one you opt for, but whichever one you opt for, that's what you're doing from now on. So if you do five, you're going to do five each time. And then you come up through the center again. And I'm coming up through the center right now because that's my next coil. So I go around one, bring that inside there nice and tight up against the stitch. Again, one, two, three, four, five. I did five before, so I'm doing five that time. Come up through the center again. I got to make sure that's really nice and tight. Don't let it go loose. Okay, go around. I'm holding it with my other hand there so I can bring that right up inside there nice and tight. I want to check the other side. And if you've got stuff like that, you may have to undo it. Now, since this is my demo, I'm not going to undo it. So I'm going to come around there. We'll see if we can adjust it a little bit. So once it's nice and tight, then again, one, two, three, four, five. Again, five or six, but whichever one you choose, keep doing that. Now, to a certain degree, watching this is pretty repetitive. It's kind of like watching paint dry. See, now there, if it's too loose, again, I can't really fudge it and, and fix it. But if it's just a little bit loose, I can kind of shift those a little bit. And so I went around. That was my stitch. One, two, three, four, five up through the center. And see how that went crooked? I need to adjust that so it goes straight there. Again, over both. Get it in there nice and tight. Check from the bottom two. One, two, three, four, five. Now pretty soon you're going to see that I have to make a change. Okay, so again, over back from the bottom again. Check that. Around. One, two, I think that may be three, four, five. And on my next one, I'm probably going to need to make a change. Let's see. Okay, so one. One. Take a little bit more time. One, Two, three, four, five. You're gonna get tired of me counting to five. Now this may be the last time I go through the center. Maybe one more. Check from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five. And now I'm actually close enough I can come up through the next part. 
because you're always just encapsulating two. So in this case, it's from the center, one, two, but as I come around here, now it's outer one and two. So it's kind of, kind of tricky there. It could be either way. Now I'm going to actually start to add in my second color. or just my second piece, because you'll run out. You can see I'm to my end. And so I've got about a foot left, and immediately after I do a stitch, that's when I want to add my second piece in. I'm going to start with this, and you can leave the end out just a little bit, but I'm going to go round one, two, three, four, five. So see how it's captured in there, and we'll trim that with tiny little embroidery scissors. So, sorry about that, I had to take a little detour. Okay, so now my little tail's hanging out there. We'll trim that off with embroidery scissors. So I went around, I think I went around five times. And then again, I go up through the next row, come around, and one, two, three, four, five. And I think I can get one more stitch in there. Round one. Now I'm going to let this come over and follow that for just a minute. So I'm going to have that point in the direction of my progress. So I'm going that way. And I'm going to start with my new one right there. One, two, three, four, five. And I need to get my needle on there. Remember, your new piece, hopefully, ideally. It's going to be a full arm's length from Ed, from arms wide out there, from fingers to fingers. Okay. Much longer than that, it's going to be unwieldy. Uh, much shorter than that, you're going to have to change all the time. So I'm going to pull that stitch just a little bit tighter there. Okay, so we did my five. Again, now I just go back one row, pull that through nice and tight. You got to pull it tight and around. Again, get that right up in there. Make sure that you're covering up your coiling core. One, keep going with the same number. Two, three, four, five. Again, up through. I don't want to go back in the same spot. I want to go over just a little bit. Again, over. One, two, three four, five. And I'm going right next to the stitch that came before it. So right there. Again, if you started out by coming up from the bottom, keep going up from the bottom. If you started by going over and through, keep going over and through. So it's just whichever way you started, that's the way you keep going. And you want to adjust so you don't have any of the white core showing. One, two, three, four, five. Now remember in the examples, if it showed, uh, those examples showed what happens if you go, oh, you know, five and six is great, but I can go a lot faster if I just go 10, 15 in between. It's going to be loose and it's going to end up being really ugly. So you don't want that. So again, double check, flip it over, check for that white core. One, two, three, four, five. Now pretty much from here, it's kind of exactly the same thing over and over and over. And again, to, to back that up, if you need to add another piece in there, if you need to see how to do it, you can just back this video up, see how to add again. You can stop and start this video as needed. Um, but you can start to see that a pattern is starting to emerge there. If you need to adjust a little bit on your stitch length, like, it's like okay, that's just a little bit far away, I probably could have gone a little bit closer. It's possible I miscounted. Um, I was thinking more about the video than anything else. But you want to make sure you're keeping track of that needle. You get one needle. Don't let anything happen to it. It will get bent a little bit. That's okay. Um, but don't let anything happen to it. Don't take it out of the room uh, unless you're taking your stuff home if you got behind. Okay? We'll worry about what happens down here later and how to do some of the other techniques. But this is for our coaster. And again, you need about eight feet of coiling core 
to get that started to make your coaster. Okay, so you just keep going around from there. So you'll have questions, and that's okay.